God. Father, we come before you, Lord, realizing that you are God and that there is none like unto you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We declare that you are great. We declare that there is none like unto you. So Father, right now, as we prepare to break the bread of life that you've so blessed us with, we do it, Father, with the understanding that it's not by any of our might or our power, but it's by your spirit. Father, we declare that no flesh will be glorified today. But Lord, we give you thanks that we are good ground and that the seed of your word will fall on this ground, that it will take root and bring forth fruit that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. We give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Come on, let's give him clap, let's clap and give him praise because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you all. Do the high fives. Go ahead on and be seated. And while you all are doing that, we give praise and we give honor uh, where honor is due to Dr. Dahl and Pastor Taffy and always thanking God for them for laying this word out uh, for us in such a way that we can practically apply. And today I want to um, you know, I've been stuck on encouraging us. It's been in my spirit to, to want to encourage. Um, we all need encouragement. You know, there, there are times when the best needs encouragement. Uh, you know, you can be strong, and that's good. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we put on the whole armor of God, and we do all of that, but we still need to be encouraged. Uh, sometimes David had to look in the mirror and encourage himself. David had to look in the mirror and say, why are you cast down, O my soul? You hope in God. He had to encourage himself to keep on keeping on. Amen? Praise God. So that's, that's my assignment here of the last few weeks. And uh, it, it'll really always kind of be my assignment because we're always, the Bible talks about edifying one another, or building one another up in the love of God. And uh, today, you know, we've been, We've been talking about just all of the things that we have available to us by being in Christ, what Christ has made available to us. That will never, ever get old to me. That, will, that is a daily um, mindset that I have, that who I am in Christ and what it means for Christ being inside of me. Uh, how does that make me different from everybody else? Not different in that I'm better, but different in that I, Christ, sets me apart because he says, I'm a royal priesthood, I'm a holy nation, I'm a peculiar people. He says that. So if, you, if you're peculiar, you're definitely set aside, amen? You're definitely different for sure. So we're different from the world. We're different from the world in that we don't get caught up in everything. We don't believe the world's propaganda. Hear me real well on that. We don't believe the world's propaganda. The world is propagating information Satan is the God, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, of this world. So the God of this world is operating through his systems to implement his ideology. So he does that and he propagates fear. He propagates doubt. He propagates um, lack of faith. He propagates... Uh, uh, where you look to self and not to God. He propagates the spirit of mammon, where mammon says, I can meet every need in your life other than God. Just trust in me. What is trusting in me? Trusting in your education, trusting in your background, trusting in your lifestyle, trusting in your bank account, trusting in your, your uh, mental faculties, trusting in your strength, trusting in everything else besides God. So that's what the devil is pushing. But what we're pushing is... Don't listen to the world, listen to God. Don't speak the language of the world, speak the language of God. They are two different languages. When you look at things, look at things from the eyes of God, not from the eyes of the world. Because there are, it's, it's, it's systematic. It's not just happening, it's intentional. So the devil is intentional 
in what he's trying to do in your life. He's intentional in trying to destroy you. It's not just happening. Don't get up thinking stuff is just happening. No, it's intentional to try to destroy your life. So if the devil is intentional, then we've got to be intentional. We've got to be intentional. See, sometimes we just kind of go, you know, tiptoe through the two lips. I know that goes over some people's head because what are y'all talking about? You all remember Tiny Tim, tiptoe through the two lips. Anyway, some of us have that mentality of just tip, tiptoeing through the two lips. Some of us have that mentality of, ah, uh, it's just que sera, sera, uh, just going on about life and not really being purposeful in life. See, there's, there's a purpose. When you get up in the morning, you have to be purposeful. Otherwise, things will just be happening. You, you're just a victim of whatever happens in the world. You're just a victim of whatever happens that day because you're just subject to whatever happens that day. Whatever comes your way, you find yourself just being subject to it. No, how about we take control? How about we grab the, uh, put our hands to the plow? How about we grab the stirring wheel? How about we steer and we determine where we're going rather than just kind of being a victim of the day? Look at your neighbor and say, I will not be a victim of the day. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So that's the mindset. The mindset that I'm pushing here, you guys have heard me say it before and I'll say it, say it again. We're not victims, we're victors. We're not victims, we're victors. Victors don't just let things happen, victors take control. Victors say, I got this. Now we know it's Christ in us who has this. In other words, we're using what Christ has given us in order to have control over it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man, I look at stuff. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I won't get all personal in my life, but man, there is, there's some stuff. This past weekend, I was like, oh my God, don't tell me nothing else. I didn't realize all of this was going on in my family, in my life, and all. It was just, it was stuff. And I was bug-eyed, and I had to come back and realize, okay, you're in Christ. Come on, Ken, get it, get it, get it together, because of this stuff. I was like, what? Are you, is somebody punking me? Right. Is somebody, like, right. you know, playing with me? Somebody going to jump out and say, oh, we're just kidding. No, this is crazy stuff that's going on in people's lives that's in my life. So I have to say, I can't let the crazy stuff going on in your life make my life crazy. You see what I'm saying? So I'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's some crazy stuff you just told me. What? <sighs> Man, I had, to get, I had to get my stuff back together. I was like, wait a minute, God, okay. <laughs> you're God. <laughs> There's none like unto you. You're higher than the highest. You're L. L. Young. Jesus is Lord on the inside of me. Greater is he that is in me than, me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror. You know what I'm saying? I had to grab myself and say, you're not a victim to this stuff. No, come on now, fight. You're, you're a victor. So I'm just trying to let y'all know that it ain't no different out there than it is up here. Well, it ain't no different up here than it is out there. So what you all deal with, I deal with too. But we got to know how to be conquerors in this thing. Remember last week we were talking about how to win in troubled times. All right, so this week, what are we talking about this week? Let's go ahead on and start getting in, into this thing. We are, when we look at the scriptures and when we look at whom God has made us to be, we were talking last week about the authority and us being in Christ, and because we're in Christ, Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Seated on the right hand of God is that place of authority, is that place of power. Therefore, we are in that place of authority and in that place of power. Now, it goes even a little deeper today because I want to talk really about, about sonship and about heirs, being heirs with God, claiming your inheritance. Claiming your inheritance. 
being an heir of God. Now, what does this mean? That, that sounds good and that sounds interesting. Um, so let's try to equate it to what we understand just about inheritance in, in our, here, down here on earth, in our system. Uh, if you talk about inheritance, and if you talk about claiming that inheritance, you're saying that something has been made available for me, that I am an heir to the inheritance. Um, when we look at the, the word heir, heir is one who stands to inherit. So if we say that we are an heir of God, we stand to inherit what God has available for us. Say, I'm an heir. I'm, an heir. I'm not just an heir, but I'm an heir of God. I'm not just an heir, but I'm an heir of God. I don't stand to just inherit, but I stand to inherit what God has for me. So God has made available to us, he has possessions that he has made available to us. Now, if God, who is God all by himself, who knows me, who created me, who knows what's best for me, and if he has something for me, that means what he has for me is what's best for me. So therefore, I want to inherit what God has, which is best for me. I want to inherit that. I want to inherit that. So being an heir, by definition, means one who stands to inherit. An heir is one who stands to inherit. An heir is one who stands to inherit. Say it with me again. I'm an heir. Praise God. So you know what that means. You stand to inherit. Grab that for a minute. You stand to inherit. That's saying God's got something for you that you will inherit. You keep that in mind now. God, God has something for me that I will inherit. But the truth of the matter is most of the things that God has for you, you've already inherited. Man, y'all walking around loaded. Do y'all know that? Y'all walking around loaded. Some of y'all looking at me like, mm, I don't feel like it. Don't look like it. That's because you hadn't changed up here. It's because you hadn't changed up here. Because you're looking at it through the wrong eyes. Because you're speaking the wrong thing. Because you're not believing what's already been made available to you. So you say stuff opposite of what actually is. You're speaking opposite of what actually is. You got to speak what is. Even though things are trying to oppose who you actually are. Say it with me again. Say, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. And I stand to inherit. Praise God. Let's go to Romans 8 chapter, 15th verse. Praise God. We are heirs and we stand to inherit. We are heirs and we stand to inherit. God is like, man, I call you to be an heir of me. That's what God is saying. I call you to be an heir of me. Shoot. Boy, I let that stuff sink in. I let it sink in. Just, just meditate on it. Just marinate it in it for a minute. You all know what it means I marinate, right? You know, you, you get in those sauces. You get in those juices. And you know what happens when it's marinating? The juices get in you. <laughs> I mean, anybody, any cooks out there, any, any grillers, any barbecue people? We just came off Labor Day. Some of you all barbecue. Corey, I know, you, I know you're a cook. I done ate some of your food. 
But when it marinates, you soak in that thing. Because you all know when you marinate, you, you got the juices and you put the meat in the juices and you leave it alone. And you just let it just start soaking up. And then any part of that meat that you bite, you taste the juice. You taste the marinade. So see, when you let it marinate, when you let yourself marinate in the things of God, no matter what angle they come at you from, they're going to encounter God. <laughs> they're going to taste God. <laughs> the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I encourage you to marinate in the things of God. Let it just soak up. Let it soak up to where if anybody come and wants a piece of you, <laughs> you know how people say, oh, you want a piece of this? Or you want some of this? Oh, you're going to taste God. That's what you're going to do. You're going to taste God. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Romans 8, chapter 15, verse. We're going to read down to verse 17. It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. Well, Bishop Fuller, he can go into this when he started talking about the spirit of adoption. He said, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. When we realize we've, adopt, we've been adopted, we realize who adopted us. So therefore, therefore, we can say, Abba, Father, or you are our Father. It says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit, God in spirit form, or God himself, as the Holy Spirit, comes and speaks to our spirit. And when it says bear witness, you all know what witness means, like a witness on a witness stand. It testifies. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is testifying to our spirit. You're the son of God. You're a child of God. Testify, Holy Ghost. Okay, I will testify. I'm going to testify to your spirit that you are a son of God. So the Holy Ghost himself Sometimes, you know, when, when you get into the scriptures, they start coming together like a puzzle, yeah. like puzzle pieces. They start coming together and, yeah. and they make that picture and you're like, I see. Now I see clearly. Oh, that's what that scripture meant over there. When he said that it talks about us being sons of God, I testify to you that you are a son of God. I testify to you that because you are a son of God, you can call me father. Because you can call me father, what does a father do? A father does a lot of things, but a father provides. A father protects. A father loves. A father gives security and, and all of those. So, praise God. Let me, let me stay, on, stay on track here. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. See, when the spirit, God said in his word, oh, help me, Jesus. He said in his word when he was, when he was making a, a declaration. He said, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Oh. He said, I can't find anybody greater that I can make this promise to you, so I got to swear by myself. <laughs> ah! Because he could swear by no other, 
by no greater, he swore by himself. So when he, the spirit of God, is testifying to you, he's saying, my testimony is true. It can't be any truer than me that you are the son of God. There's nobody else in my creation, in my universe, that can argue against me because there's none greater than me. And me says that you are my children. Woo! Man, I'm about to have a fit up here. Lord have mercy. The scriptures come together. The scriptures support themselves. The scripture is, it can stand. It can stand. So anyway, Lord, let me get off this. I, I have a tendency to just stay on things because they, they keep talking to me. But anyway, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Understand the power that's in there, that we are the children of God. It's important that we understand that we are the children of God. Then he says in verse 17, and if you are children, then you are heirs. If you are children, you stand to inherit. But get this, he says, not only are you heirs, but you are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, and we talked last time, we, we, we know that this isn't just a, a walk in the park. We know that for as many as live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution. So those things are going to come, nothing to be afraid of. Those things are going to come because you will overcome them. So don't be afraid when the trial comes. Don't be afraid when you're tested. Don't be afraid when you're squeezed. See, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and when he was praying, and remember when the great, he sweated the great drops of blood because the, the pressure was intense. But see, Gethsemane, by definition, means pressing of the seed. In other words, that pressure will be there sometimes. We all have our Gethsemane moments where it's hard, where it's pressing us, but it's squeezing out good stuff. Amen? Because we've marinated in Christ. <laughs> so when something is being squeezed out of us, it's Christ that's being squeezed out of us. So don't, don't run away from the trials. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be scared of them. So when somebody talk about suffering, a trial, a tribulation, just don't freak out. Know that God is in you. Christ is in you. And he has overcome the world. So he said here, he said, and if children, then you are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also that we may be also glorified together. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs or we stand to inherit. Excuse me. What it says, you stand, you are, you are an heir of God. Or in other words, you stand to inherit what God has and who God is. The same with Christ being on the inside of you. God and Christ, they're the same here. So with that being said, I want you to get this. Write this down because you'll need to meditate on this for a minute. I don't think you'll just get it when I, when I first say it, okay? But get this. God himself is his greatest gift. God himself is his greatest gift. God can't give you a greater gift than himself. <laughs> Woo! God can't give you a greater gift than himself. Let's put all this together. Now, that's why... 
God had to come down in bodily form. Remember I told you that's called the incarnation where God inhabited flesh and he, we called him Jesus. Y'all get this. This ain't difficult. Y'all got it. Okay. God had to come down in flesh, incarnation, and live amongst us and demonstrate it in human form and fulfill the law, did all that, finished it, went back to heaven. But he came down here in the form of Jesus. He left and went back to heaven, but he came back in the form of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Long, long, long. But now where is the Holy Ghost? Where is the Holy Ghost? In us. So that's why I say God himself is his greatest gift. So when he gave us the Holy Ghost, he was giving us himself. He said, there's nobody greater than me. I can't swear by anybody else. I had to swear by myself. So the greatest thing I can give you is myself. And he did that via the Holy Ghost. So when he said that we are children of God and we are heirs of God and heirs stand to inherit, but who do they stand to inherit? They stand to inherit God. This joint heirs with Christ is significant because it is through Christ that we're able to be called sons or children. So if you take Christ out of this equation, we don't get God. If you take Christ out of this equation, that's why I want to break this down because sometimes our mind splits off and we start thinking that it's just us and we forget about Christ actually made us. No, everything you think pertaining to God, pertaining to the word, pertaining to the Holy Ghost, pertaining to faith, pertaining to all of that is via Christ. That's what this grace is about. This grace is about that because, see, you got to keep in mind, while we were yet sinners, and if you've heard me teach before, I focus on that word yet, because that word yet meant that you were still in your sins. While you were yet still in your sin or sinners, Christ died for you, for me. So why would Christ die for me when there was nothing that I really could offer Christ? Why would you die for somebody that... One, one translation, I think it was the, um, um, the message. The message version. It says, while we were of no value whatsoever to him. In other words, we, we didn't bring nothing to the table. He chose to die for us. So we shouldn't ever. Now, in Christ, we are the greatest. Outside of Christ, we are nothing. So anytime we profess value, that is only in Christ. You step outside of Christ and start talking about how great you are, you're a fool. Now, I know I use that word fool, and I meant to use it, because <laughs> that's what you would be if you tried to profess value outside of Christ. But in Christ, we win, we win, we're everything, we're, we're the head, not the tail, we're above, not beneath, we're more than conquerors, greater is he that is in us, all of that stuff in Christ. Outside of Christ, 
woe is me. So we are in Christ. So now, because we are in Christ, our airship comes via our sonship. Our sonship comes via being in Christ. So now that we're in Christ, that makes us now a joint heir. Because we're joined to Christ, therefore we are heirs of God. The truth of the matter is, let's take us out of the picture. And let's put it this way. Jesus Christ is an heir of God. Because of what Jesus did, we are now in Christ, which makes us an heir of God. So it all has to be looked at through the sonship of being in Christ, us being made sons. Let me say this. Paul points out the conditions upon which the possession of God's inheritance depends. It is children of God who are heirs of God. It is by union with Christ Jesus, the son, to whom the inheritance belongs. It belongs to Christ, but it is by union, us being union, being in union with Christ, the son, that they who believe on his name receive the power to become the sons of God. And with that power, you possess the inheritance. So it's all through Christ. There is no inheritance without sonship, and there is no sonship without Christ. So all that we've talked about of being heirs, of uh, standing to inherit, being heirs of God, is all via Jesus Christ. Now, if you would, let's just give Jesus a clap of praise. Hallelujah. And thank him. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for being good. Thank you, Lord, for making a way. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in you. Thank you, Jesus, for being in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. So now we, we look at this. There is, mm, there is this humility that, that comes over you when you realize what Jesus did for us. There's this thankfulness. There's this... Um, Mm. I mean, it, it's humbling. It is seriously humbling when you start thinking what Christ did for us. It takes the boasting out of you. It snatches any bit of self-righteousness. It just snatches it out. Because when you go trying to correct somebody else and trying to tell them how they're supposed to live and da-da-da-da-da-da, all, all that does is that, that finger comes back to you. Well, how are you living before? Who made you the judge? Who made you the righteous one? Now it's Christ. So when you want to point your finger at somebody to tell them how they're supposed to live, point your finger at them and tell them about Jesus. Not to beat them down, but, but tell them there's a better way. Tell them there's a better way because you realize if you didn't take that better way, you're, you, 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 you're the same. You're the same, man. It, it, it's humbling. It really is. It, I'm bold in Christ, but man, when I start thinking about me without Christ, it is humbling. It really is. I, I'm, I don't, I don't want to beat that too much, but let's, let's keep on. Okay. Now, if we are a joint heir with Christ, what did Christ inherit? Let's, let's look at this a little bit. If we are a joint heir with Christ, 
let's look at some scriptures to support what did Christ inherit? Remember, we're, we're heirs only because we're in Christ. And we, so we're joint heirs because we join with Christ. We, Christ is saying, I enable you to get everything that was given to me because I'm in you, you're in me. So now you can inherit the, the, the same thing. So now if we're joint heirs with Christ, what did Christ inherit? Let's read Hebrews, the first chapter, Hebrews 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hebrews 1, uh, uh, Hebrews 1, start in verse 1. Hebrews first chapter, start in verse 1. <clears throat> Praise God. And it says here, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophet. Next verse. He now hath in these last days spoken to us now by who? By his son. So before he was speaking by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's speaking to us by his son, who, whom, whom God hath appointed heir of all things. Hallelujah. Underline that. God has appointed Jesus, his son, heir. Remember, heir means you stand to inherit. So he has appointed him heir of what? All things. So in other words, Jesus stands to inherit what? All things. If he's the heir, he has appointed him heir of all things. Heir means one who stands to inherit. So he has appointed him to inherit all things. By whom also... He made the worlds. Next verse. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his persons and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, those of you all who were here last week, you all should know what the right hand means. The right hand means that place of authority. Remember that place of power. So the Bible says, he, he in the brightness of its glory, the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of its power. When he had purged our sins, he went back to heaven and he sat down because God had him a seat on the right hand of the majesty. The majesty is God on high. Next verse. Now get this. Being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So there are a couple of things that we read out of these scriptures here that Jesus has inherited. One is he has inherited all things. Remember, we read that. Then the other thing here in verse 4, it said, by inheritance... He obtained a more excellent name than all the angels, than all the principalities, than all powers. So Jesus inherited all things, and he inherited a more excellent name. So from Hebrews here, we see that Jesus inherited those two things, all things, and he inherited a name. Now just think about the fact that you have also inherited all things. You have to think about that for a minute. I have also inherited all things. See, God made it clear when he made Adam down here on the earth. He gave him a commandment. That commandment was, in essence, have dominion over all of this. Now, I know you're not going to go up to a tiger and say, I have dominion over you. I realize that would kind of be foolish. If you find yourself in that situation, you might want to say, I have dominion over you. But I would not advise you to go out and find a tiger and say, I have dominion over you. Even though God has given us dominion over all things. Amen? He's given us dominion over the, over the earth, even just as he did with Adam. Adam lost it. Satan got it. 
Jesus took it back. Jesus gave it to us. <laughs> Let me do that again. Let me do that one again. <laughs> Adam had it. Adam lost it to Satan. Then Satan, Jesus took it from Satan, and then he gave it back to us. So it started with a man, ended with a demagogue, went back to God where it belonged, and then God gave it back to man. Because he gave it to man in the first place. <laughs> man, I, I love the scriptures. Praise God. I love the scriptures. So here we are. He now says, because of what Jesus has done, you're now an heir of all things. You once were an heir of all things. I've now made you an heir of all things, but it even goes higher now. Because before it was dealing with the earth and all that was in the earth. But now I make you an heir of all things that also includes the heavenly realm. I know you all say, okay, Pastor Ken, you, you kind of lost me on that one. I was, I was with you on the earth, <laughs> but when you went to the heavens, you kind of lost me. Well, remember those scriptures that we read. Um, well, let's, let's just start with these that we just read, and then I'm going to prove my point by going back to the scriptures we read last week. Now, right here, he just said in verse 4, being made so much better than who? Okay, so we're, we're talking about the spirit realm, right? We're talking about the spirit realm. So he's telling Jesus, he said, I've made you so much better than the angels, and I've given you an inheritance, and by inheritance you obtained a more excellent name than they. Who are they? The angels. So I've made Jesus better and higher than the angels. Now let's go back. And let's look, at, um, let's look at these other scriptures here where he said, Ephesians 1, 20. Ephesians 1, uh, well, we'll read 20 and 21 just to make this point. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, don't need to explain right hand if, uh, anymore. You all understand that. So he set him at his right hand far above, far above. Who? Principalities against powers. We're talking spiritual realm now. Might, dominion, and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but what? Also in the world to come. <clears throat> 1 Peter 3.22 so Christ is above even not just things here on the earth, but also in the heavenly realm. 1 Peter 3.22. Who is gone into heaven, this is Jesus, and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So now we understand via scriptures that all the angels, powers, authorities, principalities, all of those are made subject unto him. So when he hath been given a name that's above all those names, he inherited a more excellent name. We read that in Hebrews. We read also in Hebrews that he inherited all things. So whereas before man had dominion here on the earth, now, Jesus gave him that, gave that back to him, but he gave him a plus one. And that plus one is you also have authority over the spiritual realm as well. So, since you inherited you, because you're joint heirs with Christ, since you inherited all these things, you now have power over the earth realm, like I said, don't go, don't go seeking out tigers and lions. Don't go picking up snakes. We're not, we're not saying that. 
We're saying if you find yourself in situations, exercise your authority. If you find yourself in a situation, exercise your authority. If you find yourself in a situation, you have to keep telling yourself and being mindful of it so that when you do find yourself in that situation, you'll remember that you have that authority. Rather than when you find yourself in the situation, you're trying to think, hmm, 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 hmm. Let me see. Let me, let me go and look up a scripture. No, you ain't got time for all that. <laughs> is it in you? Is it is or is it ain't? Is you is or is you ain't my baby? Well, do you have it? Do you have it? Is it in you? Do you know who you are? Like I said, when the devil came and tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he asked him, he said, if thou be the son of God, Jesus said, no question, I'm the son of God. He didn't have to think on it. Know who you are. Know that you are an heir of God. And a joint heir with Jesus Christ, meaning that you're only an heir of God through Jesus Christ. But now because you're in Jesus Christ and you have an inheritance to all the things of God, you have an inheritance, all things. And then you also have been given a name that you have access to that name, which is that name of Jesus. And when you use the name of Jesus, hallelujah, you got the power. Mm. We have to meditate on this. Because, see, we've been trained for, for months and years to think differently the way of the world. We, we got we to gotta meditate and, and get our minds renewed and become more proficient in this. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go out there, you know, right out and, and start operating in this. No, we, we got to meditate on this. This is where our minds get renewed. And as our minds renewed, our spirit and our mind, remember I told you that they link up together and then now there's a change in us. Because the Holy Ghost, uh, the Spirit of God, excuse me, on the inside of us, the Holy Ghost working in our spirit and our minds have now gotten renewed to this truth that we're understanding. And our spirits are saying, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to come into this understanding. Now that you've come into this understanding, let's work together. Because when we work together, then I can change us. The Spirit, Spirit of God, I can change us. But see, before, I wanted to change it, but you were fighting against me. I wanted to change, but you were fighting against me because you weren't understanding who you are in Christ. Oh, but now you're understanding. Good. Let's work together. Let's work together. And now the Spirit of God is not, it's working in us through our spirit, and it's not encumbered by an unrenewed mind. Hallelujah. Come on, say this with me. Say, I am, I am a, new a new creature in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. I'm an heir, I'm an heir. Of, God. of God. As an heir, As an heir. of God. I'm an heir to all things, and I'm an heir to the name of Jesus. Therefore, I win. I win. I win. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo oh, man. Commodore say, how can we lose with stuff we use? But we understand how we can't lose with the stuff we use because God has given us, given us all this great power. Man, let's walk in it. Let's be somebody different. I'm encouraging us to be different. I'm encouraging us to take on this mantle that Jesus left us via the Holy Ghost. Remember Elijah and Elijah? Elijah left Elijah the mantle. Jesus has left us the mantle, the Holy Ghost. Wear this mantle. Let's be who God called us to be. Hallelujah. I believe we literally can be world changers. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So, listen, we're going to do it a little different today. If, um, let's complete our worship. Let's, let's do that at this time. Let's complete our worship. Let's, let's give. Let's prepare to give. As God has so blessed us, I'm telling you that anything that you give today is only what God has given you. 
So don't look at it like I'm doing God a favor or, or you know, I'm, I'm giving God something. All God gave that to you so you can use it as an expression of love to him. That's really what it's all about. It's, it's, God doesn't need your money. He gave you the money. All he wants you to do with that money is use it as an expression of love. Just use it as an expression of appreciation. Just, just use it to say, God, I appreciate you. I'm so thankful for you. Oh, God, how good you've been to me. Lord, you know what? From the outside, it might look a little rough, but from the inside, I know you've been good to me. I'm thankful that I have a right mind. I'm thankful that I'm able to smile. I think I'm thankful that I can find joy in the midst of a trial. I'm thankful, Lord, that I'm not subject to my circumstances, but God, you are the center of my joy. Hallelujah. That's why I give to you. That's why I'm thankful to you. So as you prepare to give, if you need an offer envelope, raise your hands. The ushers will get one to you. Uh, you see there the ways to give. You can give via text. You can give by calling in, and you see those, that number up there on the screen. You can give by if you want to mail it in. Uh, I'm really still surprised by the number of people that, that choose to, to mail it in, but praise God. You know what? It's, it, it all works. <laughs> it all works the same way. So if you want to fill that thing out and, and uh, send it in, and God bless you. We appreciate it. We will use it for the kingdom of God. Or you can, of course, if some of you all might be watching via the, uh, the website, Creflo Dollar Ministries or worldchangers.org, then go to click that uh, Give button up there, and it'll take you through the process to give. Now, of course, we can make it real simple by you can take your phone and just scan that QR code uh, that's up there to take you directly to where you can give. You can give there that way. Some people may choose to give via the PayPal uh, system. You can go, if you have a PayPal account, you can do it that way as well. Um, you know, it's it, the, the truth of the matter uh, concerning the funds, when I say the truth, like we've been lying, we don't, we're not lying, <laughs> but we, we take these funds and we use them for the furthering of the kingdom of God. There are so many people in need. There are so many people that need help. Um, the greatest thing we can do to help them is to preach this gospel. Because, see, then you're showing a person how to fish rather than feeding them fish every time. When you preach the gospel to them, they say, oh, now I know how to believe God. Rather than you believe in God for me, I know how to believe God. Thank you for teaching me how to trust God. Preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel. But yeah, we realize some people aren't there or some people still maybe have challenges. So we, you know, we have to feed and we have to help in some ways there. So we, it does that too. But know that your funds are being used to enhance the kingdom of God. Praise God. Well, listen, if you have them ready, let's hold them up and go ahead on and let's, let's pray over this. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to express our love, to express our appreciation, to express our thankfulness for you blessing us. Sometimes it may not be super clear how your blessings come, but Lord, they, are, they always seem to come, and we thank you for that. Now, Father, we sow this as a seed we thank you, Father, that you will give seed to the sower, that you will multiply our seed that is sown, and, Father, you will increase our righteousness. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Receive it as a sweet smell and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, listen, if there's someone out there in here or via online who hasn't, haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we want to extend that invitation to you. We want you to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He's so good. There have been a couple of times up here where I've, I've had to 
hold back tears even when preaching because you start thinking about how good he is. It's, it just catches you at some times. Do you want to experience that goodness? Do you want to experience the peace that God have, have for you? Do you want to experience the, the goodness, the love, the assurance, casting off that weight, casting off that worry, casting off all that pressure that has been on you? If you want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, then pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I come before you realizing that I'm a sinner. And Lord, I need a Savior, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Forgive me of all of my sins. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior, as the forgiver of my sins. And I thank you, Lord, for loving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's just that easy because really he did all the work. He just asked us to believe and to accept him. If you prayed that prayer, then text the word I'm saved to 51555, 51555, one word, I'm saved. Give us your name, give us your email address, and we will send to you an ebook that will be real, real helpful in this new decision that you just made. It'll give you an understanding of what just happened. It'll kind of give you an understanding of the first steps you need to take to get you on your path with Jesus Christ. We thank God for you, and we receive you into the family of God right now. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for those who've come into the kingdom. <laughs> Amen. Welcome, 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 welcome. Well, if you all would, we're going to stand up and get ready to close out. Well, I hope you got something out of this message today. <clears throat> praise God. It's, just want to encourage us, man. We... Woo. We've been set up to win. We've been set up to win. Lift your hands. <clears throat> ah, may the revelation, the understanding, the wisdom, the knowledge of your heirship, your sonship in God through Jesus Christ may it be etched in your spirit, man. May it be rooted in your soul. May you be assured in your spirit. Go out in power. The power of God be upon you to be different. The power of God be upon you to change the world. The power of God be upon you to reflect Jesus Christ and his great love. May lives be changed for the better and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good one. You asked and we answered. We know there are friends of the ministry who prefer CDs and DVDs. But for those of you who find the digital versions of messages better fit your life, Creflo and Taffy Dollar's message series are now available as digital downloads in the CYWE store. Log on to CYWEstore.com today to see the whole catalog of new and re-release messages that can be downloaded to any device for easy and convenient listening.